Hi, my name is Emily and I'm the Assistant Director of Career Advising and Counseling in the FSU Career Center. In this 10 minute presentation, I'm going to walk you through the basics of writing a resume and the information needed to get you started. So, what is a resume? It's a marketing tool and should be unique in both content and format to highlight facts about an individual as they relate to a job or position. Resumes can be used by candidates applying for work, graduate school, internships, or even scholarships. I'm going to talk about the major categories of a resume now. Take some notes as you follow along. Contact information. Your full name, address, phone number, and email address should be the first item on your resume. You want it to be very easy for an employer to contact you. Make sure your email address is professional in nature and doesn't contain cutesy words or slang. Career objective. This is where you tell the reader of your resume what you want to do and what type of position you are looking for. It should be broad enough to cover any suitable employment, yet specific enough to give an element of sound career direction to your resume. Remember, the objective is optional. You have the option to omit this section from the resume and relay your career objective in a cover letter. Sometimes, writing an objective can be frustrating, especially if you haven't defined your career objective yet. Visit the Career Center homepage at career.fsu.edu, scroll down to our resources, all career guides, and you'll see we have all of our career planning and job search guides posted online for you. Click Creating a Career Objective, and a PDF will open for you to learn about all of the aspects of writing a career objective. Education. In this section, you show the reader the highest level of education achieved or the degree you are currently seeking. Start with your most recent education and continue backwards with other schools attended, degrees earned, or training received. Here's what the education section may look like. Include the name of your institution, the location, name of the degree, date you graduated, or the date you expect to graduate. You can include your GPA if it's a 3.0 or higher. We shouldn't round our GPA. You may also include information such as relevant coursework, honors, or study abroad information in this section. Remember, it's not necessary to include high school after your sophomore year. Experience. This section can include full and part-time jobs, internships, volunteer work, leadership activities, research experience, special projects, or even military experience. Basically, it's not a section for paid work only. You may want to create a few experience sections based on your background. For instance, you could have internship experience, additional experience, or even relevant experience. To get started, you'll want to list your most recent experience and work your way backwards, just like you did for education. Include the following information in your experience sections. Position title, name of the organization, organization's location, dates employed, duties and responsibilities, but don't forget to include accomplishments. For work you're presently engaged in, use present tense for your description. If it's a job you did in the past, make sure your descriptions are all in past tense. While creating job descriptions, use a list of positive action verbs, like the examples in the video, to start out each description. You'll want to avoid using first person throughout your resume, so remember, start with action verbs. Sometimes, people have a difficult time describing what they did in a particular job. Use the job duties exercise on page 7 of the Career Center's Writing a Resume Guide to identify your transferable skills and help you create a vivid and accurate picture of the job or experience. You also want to find a balance between very brief descriptions and ones that are too long. Reviewing sample resumes and looking at your actual job description is another way to write meaningful job descriptions. If you aren't sure what to include or not to include in the experience section, we suggest listing all of your jobs 
and then bring the resume in or have it critiqued by a career advisor. We can help you highlight the most important information and make sure you're describing it in the most valuable way. If you're a distance learner and not living in Tallahassee, contact the Career Center to find out how to complete an online critique. We've talked about contact information, education, and experience, which are foundations of a resume, but there are many other options. Here are some examples of additional categories you can include in your resume. Before you begin the task of actually writing your rough draft, thoroughly familiarize yourself with the do's and don'ts of resume writing included in the Writing a Resume Guide. By following these guidelines, you will increase the probability of producing a readable and straightforward account of your unique qualifications. This information should be enough to get you started or review your current resume. Here are a few final tips, resume do's, and resume don'ts. Don't state salary requirements. Give reasons for quitting previous jobs. Expound on philosophy or values or really offer anything that might be negative information. If you need help getting started, Seminolink has a new feature called Resume Builder. To start the process, click on the Create a Resume button located under the Shortcuts tab in Seminolink. Resume Builder allows students and alumni to create a resume using a variety of formats and styles. Resume Builder should be used as a starting point. After creating your Resume Builder resume, you have the option to submit it for an online video critique. This is a great option for students and alumni who do not live in Tallahassee. We've covered the basics of a resume, online career guides to help you get started, and introduced you to the Career Center's Resume Builder in Seminole Link. Remember, you can always stop by the Career Center for drop-in advising Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. If you are a distance learning student, please contact the Career Center to learn about distance critiques. Don't forget, keep up with the Career Center on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook.